¡Hijo de puta! That doesn't smell like poop. Unless she stopped showering. There are plenty of things that make you question what the hell just happened, either in a good way or a bad way. In this list, we will explore the top 10 changes during the game that made you go, what the? The rule is it has to be during the game, and cannot be joke endings like Silent Hill 2. Sorry, dog ending, but I'll include you in a future list. Also, guys see he's Japanese is surprisingly good. Anyways, as usual, one game per franchise, as well as some minor to big spoilers ahead. Let's get started. Number 10, The One Reborn, Bloodborne. Honestly, I don't have to explain much for this. It's a visual abomination to the eyes that really makes you think, what the? Number 9, Big Boner Stages, Shadows of the Damned. I used to give the most lovely boo jobs before I fucked them in their ass sockets. <laughs> of course, this is when I still have flashy boo. Not only is this game awesomely fun, it has a lot of sexual humor to it, as you can probably tell from the title of this entry. You are Garcia Hotspur, who is on a mission to save his girlfriend from the demons of hell. You have your trusty companion and reliable gun, Johnson. The dick jokes don't stop there. During the game, you must fight giant enemies and take them down. You have to call a sex hotline and have Johnson listen to it in order to grow into the big boner. A weapon that Garcia holds near his own junk to solidify this weapon in the game. <laughs> now that is a big boner. All right, Johnson, let's take this pole for a stroll. Number eight, Psycho Mantis, Metal Gear Solid. You, you doubt my power. During this stealthy game, you square off against a man called Psycho Mantis, who is known for reading the minds of his prey. He doesn't read Snake's mind, but instead reads yours, by scanning your memory card and relaying popular game franchises to you. Played some Castlevania? He'll comment that you like to play Castlevania in the game to you. Not only that, when you finally get to fighting him, he makes it impossible for you to move by reading all of your moves. To bypass this, you have to physically get up and switch your controller port from player 1 to player 2 in order to gain back your movement and fight. Mind blown yet? <laughs> Number seven, Nosebleeds, Bioshock Infinite. I know why you have come, false shepherd. I see every sin that blackens your soul. Going through the game without any knowledge of the deep, confusing plot brings up many what the moments. As you progress through the game, there are random points in time that cause Booker, the main character, to have a nosebleed. It is pointed out by certain characters and also made visually aware to the player with Booker's left hand having some blood on it after the screen goes a bit fuzzy. The reasons behind the nosebleeds for any new player are a complete mystery. Of course, later in the game it is revealed that time paradoxes in parallel universes are the cause of the nosebleeds, as Booker is stuck in a time loop with hints of his past life and alternate lives crop up, causing the random bleeding to occur. It always ends in blood. <laughs> Come to lead my lamb astray, but thy crook is bent and thy path is twisted. twisted. Go back to the sorrow from which you came! Number 6, Disc 2, Xenogears. Throughout the first disc of the game, the story plays out as you go along on your journey. You pop into one town, fight some dudes, get some story, move on. When you wrap up the first disc of the game and pop in the second disc, you are introduced to a much different pace of storytelling. Basically, you watch and read text told in the past from the main characters, eventually acting them out sometimes, once they have finished what they are saying. Only to go back and read some more, it just breaks the flow of the game, of what you're used to, earning the reaction of, what the? Number 5, 
Body switching, Chrono Cross. If you don't read deeply in this game, this moment will obliterate your brain. And having been a young teen at the time, I didn't pay much attention to details. Which are crucial to understanding why the hell this game forces you to switch bodies with the main villain. In the most basic form of explanation, Lynx, the cat dude, needs your body in order to access the Frozen Flame, the key plot device in this game. He leads you to this mysterious stone called the Dragon's Tear, which, if looked into, can switch the minds of those who stare into it. Unfortunately, that is you, and thus the weird part of the game begins where you lose all your party members and become a cat, finding your way back in order to regain your true self again. Four. Changing sides, Breath of Fire 4. <laughs> At the tail end of the game, you confront the big baddie, Fao Lu, who is the other half of the main character, Ryu. He was summoned hundreds of years ago, but the summoning was incomplete and messed up, and he only received half of his power. The other half resides in Ryu, who was summoned in the present time of the game. Fao Lu wants Ryu to fuse with him in order to become complete. As the player, you are given dialogue options that can give you the good or bad ending. If you choose the option, maybe so, you are absorbed into Fao Lu and are forced to destroy your beloved party members that you have traveled so far with. <laughs> Number 3. Nephilim Stages, El Shaddai Ascension of the Metatron. Again, another visual what-the-fuck moment. Throughout this game, you are battling fallen angels and their minions, going through a variety of visually stunning places to climb your way through the tower to fight each of the angels. And then you are introduced to the children of the fallen angels, the Nephilim, and their strangeness. These platformer levels are weird, in the very least, and really break the game's appearance and tone as these things are bouncy and cute. I'll let the video do the rest of the talking. Number 2, Death and the Sun, Digital Devil Saga 2. Did you stop the transmission? No, we can't. Here comes the major spoilers in the second part of the Digital Devil Saga series. Upon being released from the simulation that was the first game, you are looking for answers and fighting your way to stop what has been dooming the world. You find out that in this world, the sun is acting very strange, turning people into stone and slowly killing the planet. As you progress through the game, you are greeted with many what the hell sections, where members of your team slowly start to die off. Sometimes one at a time, sometimes two at a time, until you're struggling to fight bosses with people you've never used and are underleveled. Brilliant. Not only that, you eventually find the source of all the problems is the sun. Yes, the sun. So what do you do? Why, you blast off to the sun in a jet! And when you arrive, all of your party members are alive, waiting for you! While you can dig for details and reasons as to why everything makes sense, the pacing of getting to the end of the game is jarring and frustrating when you keep losing your main party. Number 1, The Other World, Silent Hill. The ultimate what the for anyone who's played any of the Silent Hill games is The Other World. I've chosen Silent Hill 1 as it was the first game in the series and the first one I played, so it makes sense, right? Anyways, in this game there's a strange dark world that pops up occasionally to mess with your mind and make everything that much creepier if you weren't already shitting yourself. These moments where you transition into the other world are often accompanied by an air raid siren.
but in more modern games, it can simply be an alarm of any kind. Much like in Downpour, where you set off a fire alarm. The first time around, when you transition from the normal world into the dark one, always garners the what the moment. And for future transitions, it is the sound of complete dread for the player. 